Now our discussion brings us to dielectrics. Dielectrics are just insulators, but used in a very interesting and very powerful way. So a dielectric is just an insulator. And what I have right here is a capacitor that is right now vacuum filled. And uh, I've got uh, a uh, charge Q on both plates and uh, with uh, surface charge density sigma. So there's an electric field in here. And I'm not going to draw the entire field. In fact, I'm just going to draw two lines of it and then get rid of them. But there is a field in there. And in fact, the E, uh, the original E that we have in there right now is sigma over epsilon naught. So, and I say original because we're about to change the field, and I'll show you how. What we're going to do is put in a, uh, fill the entire space in here with an insulator. And what happens when you fill this space with an insulator is that all the molecules get polarized. So I'm going to just draw a couple of molecules in here. And which end of these molecules do you suppose would get uh, be where the electrons are hanging out more often? Well, because they attract the positives, it's going to be over on this side. All these molecules get polarized so that their electron cloud gets shifted somewhat to the right, and that leaves their uh, the center of their nuclei a little bit left behind, like that. That creates effectively the same thing as if there were a negative charge here and a positive charge right over there. Notice that the original field was going like this. I'll draw that in. This is the direction of E original. But because of these induced charges, and they really are induced there, um, there's a counter field like this. That way. So the field gets actually weaker inside here. Now this is not as much charge induced, so maybe just, you know, I'll just put one over here and one over here. So it's not the same amount of charge as on the capacitor plate. It's a fraction of that. So uh, some of these just end there, like that field line ends there and that one goes to there. Uh, the rest of these, you know, may get through. This one ends there. And this is just to show that the field is now weaker field in here, E nu, is weaker. So the new field inside that capacitor with that dielectric in there is weaker than the original field. I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but the battery is disconnected in this situation, and that means that the charge cannot escape. But what we're getting here is we're getting the same amount of charge Charge stays same, but field is weaker. And that means delta V, which equals ed, is lower. Which means we get the same amount of charge Q, but with less delta V. Same Q with less delta V. So that actually makes our capacitor stronger, a bigger capacitance. Now, how much does that field change? Well, this uh, dielectric uh, has a, a factor called kappa, the dielectric constant kappa. We'll get to that in a minute. But what this means is anytime you see epsilon naught, that turns into kappa times epsilon naught, changing the permittivity. So E nu will be sigma over kappa. That's a kappa, not a k. Kappa epsilon naught. Notice kappa is a number that's typically uh, greater than 1, so our new electric field is weaker. So our new delta V, which is equal to, and I'll make this the new, which is equal to E nu d, is the same thing as it was before, delta V old, original, but it's over kappa. And the E nu is just like the E field old, original, over kappa. 
So the E field has been weakened, but let's see what this does to our overall capacitance. Because the capacitance is quite overvalued, this becomes the same Q as before. Uh, so this is our new capacitance, which is uh, times E nu D, where D is the distance between the plates. And this is Q over E original over kappa times D. So this means that my C nu is equal to kappa times Q over E original times D, which simply means that this is just K kappa rather Q over delta V original. So this means that the bottom line, my new capacitance is equal to kappa. What is Q over delta V original? That is C original. So I have increased the capacitance of my capacitor by a factor kappa. This is what we said at the very beginning, how the capacitance has only to do with geometry and materials. This is where the materials kick in. So uh, the dielectric constant kappa is the factor by which the permittivity increases. In other words, you are permitted more charge per unit of electric field, and hence the factor by which the capacitance increases when the dielectric fills the empty space between the plates. So let's just look at a couple of these. A vacuum, sensibly, is just one, because that doesn't change uh, our capacitance. Interestingly, air, air has a very, uh, a, a dielectric constant that's very, very close to one. So this is why I kept saying, well, it's either vacuum filled or air filled. They basically give you the same capacitance to four sig figs or so. Uh, or at least three sig figs for sure, air has a very low dielectric constant. It's basically like having just a vacuum in there. But if you put certain other materials in there, Teflon is a kappa of 2.1. That effectively doubles, and a little bit more, your capacitance if you put Teflon in there. Nylon with 3.4 more than triples it. Aluminum oxide almost 10 times as much. And if you have some some of these very, very high dielectric constant materials in between your plates, this gives you 233 times the capacitance. So the dielectric constant is all these numbers, and this is just, these are just selected ones. There is a slight temperature and electric field dependence, which we usually ignore. Uh, so these are the values at room temperature. So notice that that increases our capacitance. Uh, that's how we get those very high capacitances uh, with uh, our, uh, all of our capacitors. And that's how we can fit. It's really not 2,000 football fields in here. It's way less than that. But there's a really good dielectric in here uh, in between the plates. So notice that before, uh, where uh, E was equal to, sigma over epsilon naught, just that, our E new is equal to our E old. This is our E old right here, sigma over epsilon naught. Notice our E new is just E over kappa. That's a kappa, not a K. And that means our new uh, flat plate capacitance is that. In general, in very general terms, no matter what type of capacitor or what geometry you have, it can be said that C nu equals kappa times C original. It increases the capacitance of your capacitor. We do have to be careful here because, for example, back, back in this situation right here, the field is weaker, but this only is true because the battery is disconnected. Now, if you connected the battery, what would happen? Well, because your capacitance is increased, more charge would rush onto this thing. If you had your battery still connected and you put that in there, you would get a bunch more charge on here. 
So you got to be careful because when you connect a battery, one thing that stays constant is the voltage across the capacitor. And if the distance is stayed the same, if this D between the two plates stays the same, E will still be delta V over D. Uh, delta V is negative, Ed still works. Uh, however, you get to get more charge on there. The permittivity is different. There's more charge permitted per Newton per coulomb of field. So you just be careful here, and uh, you do need some strong conceptual understanding uh, as we go into the next piece.